Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I am Heather from Children's Book World, and I'm super excited to be here with you this morning because we have one of my favorite authors and actual favorite people here. <laughs> Catherine Locke is here to share their book, What Are Your Words? And we're so excited this is out in the world for you all to see. If you want a personalized copy, Catherine will be stopping by later this week to sign them so you can go onto our website, childrensbookworld.net. Look, I have this fancy little banner just to show you. And you can order a signed and personalized copy of the book. Uh, I don't wanna take up too much time because I want Catherine to read their book to you all. So I'm gonna do my magic thing and disappear and leave this all to you. Welcome, Catherine. Thanks so much for having me. Um, so we're still doing virtual events and I'm still getting used to them, but this is my new book. It is What Are Your Words? And it is a book about pronouns. So we're gonna talk about what pronouns are. So if you don't know, that's okay. Um, I wrote this book last year during the pandemic and I'm really proud of the book. And it's a book about a kid named Ari who's trying to figure out what words fit them. So I'm gonna read it and then we'll talk about it a little more and do some question and answer. Okay, so what are your words? Okay. My uncle Lior is coming to, to visit today. I can't wait to show them around my neighborhood and I can't wait for all of my neighbors to meet them. So that's the Ari, and then that's their uncle, Lior. Okay. Lior is my favorite uncle. They have many colorful hats. The garden at their house is magical. They are a biologist and look at teeny tiny things under a microscope. I learn a lot from Uncle Lior, like that people can be described by more than what they look like or what they do. In fact, there are a lot of words to say who people are and how they feel. Some of these words are pronouns. Pronouns are words that can take the place of your name, like I, me, you, she, he, or they. Okay. Uncle Lior knows how important my words are to me because I am always growing and changing and some of my words change with me. So every time they visit, they ask, what are your words, Ari? Sometimes I know what my words are right away. Happy, creative, funny, he, him. Sometimes I have to think about my words. Thoughtful, athletic, silly, she, her. Sometimes I have to try my words out. Sleepy, calm, honest, A and M. Sometimes I use just one set of pronouns. Sometimes I change my pronouns. Sometimes I use all the pronouns I can think of. My pronouns are like the weather. They change depending on how I feel. And that's okay because they are my words. This time when Uncle Lior asks about my words, I have a problem. I don't know what words to use, I cry. I can't decide which pronouns fit today. That's okay, Uncle Lior tells me, their smile warm. You have all day to think about it. But I want to know what my words are now. He and him feel squirmy and wiggly to me. Those aren't right. See how sad Ari is here? I'll have to think about my words later because it's time for Uncle Lior, my sister Rachel, and me to head to our neighborhood's big summer bash. Summer is my favorite season and barbecues are my favorite kind of party. They're carrying bags of chips. Rachel dances and sings in the street, twirling around and making me laugh. Rachel has her own words. 
Her pronouns don't change, but sometimes she's quiet instead of loud. Today, she is loud. Mrs. Bolton walks behind us, laughing at her friend Charlie's joke. Mrs. Bolton's cat chases Charlie's little brown dog up and down the sidewalk. Mrs. Bolton and Charlie each have their own words too. Mrs. Bolton's words are curious, baker, considerate, she, her. And Charlie's words are shy, doctor, generous, he, him. Our neighbor Anna tinkers with her car in the driveway. When I first met Anna, she had a different name and used different pronouns. But now she goes by Anna and uses she and her every day. She's my favorite neighbor. I'll be there soon, she calls. She's a mechanic, polite, vegetarian, she, her. We see Robin Day and their kids drawing with chalk. When I introduce Robin to Uncle Lior, I use Zier words. Artistic, sweet, kind, Z, Zier. Uncle Lior says hello and tells Zier their words too. We'll see you at the bash, they say. Ava and George from the ivy color covered house are on their way to the summer bash. Nice to meet you, Lior, Ava says. They are Uncle Lior, I explain proudly. Everyone laughs. Rachel laughs the loudest and turns to me. What are your words, Ari? You can see Ava's words are A and M, and George's words are he and him, and their words are responsible, hardworking, and serious. I think about my words. She and her feel sharp and crackly to me. Those won't work today. Why can't I figure out which words to use? I just want to be able to share my words with everyone. When we arrive at the bash, we see our new neighbor. Hello, my name is Ari. What are your words, I ask? Hi, Ari, I'm Avery, and I use they and them, they reply. Like my Uncle Lior, I say. What are your other words? Avery thinks. My other words are teacher, friendly, and loyal. What are your words? I scrunch my face. I thought I would know by now. I'm not sure what fits me today, I tell them. You see Avery? I try some other words. A and ear feel heavy and bumpy to me. Those don't fit either. You'll figure it out, Avery tells me. Sometimes it just takes patience, but I don't want to be patient. It shouldn't take this long to find my words. Everyone else seems to know theirs. I go to Uncle Lior and tug on their sleeve. I still don't know my words. That's okay, Uncle Lior says reassuringly. They're your words. They didn't disappear. If you don't know them today, you'll know them tomorrow. Soon, it's time for fireworks. I wait for the show to start, just like I've been waiting all day to figure out my words. Waiting makes me buzzy like a bee and makes my skin feel itchy. When the first explosions finally burst into the sky, everyone gasps. Suddenly, I feel my words fall into place. Sometimes, I know my words right away. Sometimes, I have to think about them. Sometimes I try to find, try my words out, but sometimes I have to wait for my words to find me. You see everyone at the neighborhood bash and then the fireworks? I squeeze Uncle Lior's hand. Uncle Lior, I whisper excitedly, what, they ask? There's another boom of fireworks and colors race through the sky. I point, those are my words. I'm like the fireworks, impatient, excited, colorful, and they, them, feel right today. Fireworks, Uncle Lior says with a laugh. They squeeze my hand. That's definitely you, Ari. My wor words finally found me. They and them 
feel warm and snug to me. These pronouns are perfect. When the fireworks are over, we walk home, all of our words floating with us and our pronouns too. Hi there. I haven't met you yet. My name is Ari and my words are impatient, bouncy, excited, nervous, colorful, and hopeful. And today my pronouns are they and them. What are your words? So that's what are your words? And my name's Catherine. My words are they and them and artistic, excited, nervous, uh, a little hot because summer has finally reached us. And I would love to hear what your words are and if you have any questions about the book or why I wrote it or who it's for, I'd love to hear from them. Thanks for listening. Hey, all right, I am back. Thank you. That was Thanks. great to start the morning off with a read aloud. Yeah. Of course, I wish I was still in my pajamas. But I know, <laughs> yeah. So um, I do have a couple questions. Yeah. I'm curious, well, I have a lot of questions actually, but I'm gonna go with this one first. Um, how much research did you have to do for all of the different pronouns that you put in the book? So I had to do a little research. So there are a couple of neo pronouns and that means new pronouns. So pronouns that you might not be familiar with like A and L, M and um, Z and Z are two new ones that I used in the book. And for those, I there are a lot of new pronouns because language is always changing and we're always finding new words for people and for things that exist in the world. Like the word computer and internet didn't exist 200 years ago, right? Those are new. So the same way that language is always changing, we have new pronouns. So I did a lot of research into neo pronouns, how people use them, how to pronounce them. Um, and it was really important both to me and to my editor that we include those in the book because she, her, he, him, they, them are standard. Lots of people know those, but they might not still feel right. So there might be other words that fit for readers and they might not know those yet. Cool. So I liked how you equated um, pronouns with other words that describe how someone feels. Um, did that idea come about originally before you wrote the book or was that sort of as you were writing it, you decided, wait a second, this is a good way to explain it. So that came out from the very beginning. So when I wrote this book, I knew that I wanted it to be a narrative. I knew I wanted it to follow a kid. I knew that it took place in a neighborhood that looks a lot like the neighborhood I grew up in. Um, there are a few names of people that I grew up with who are no longer with us. So I could use their names freely. Um, but there was like, when I was growing up, there was a house that was covered in ivy. And my my siblings and I all called it the ivy color covered house. Like that is how we referred to the house and everyone who ever lived in it. Um, so I really wanted to include that. But it was also really important for me to include pronouns as part of who we are. Because I think that right now, a lot of people are boiling people down to one part of their identity instead of looking at people as being whole people who have lots of facets of their identity, different parts of who we are. And when pronouns are talked about in schools or on the news or in newspapers, they often are talked about just for trans and non-binary people. But cis people, so people with whom their gender aligns with the gender they were assigned at birth, um, they're, have, they have pronouns too. Heather, you have pronouns that you use and they're just as valid as everybody else's pronouns. So making sure that we talk about pronouns the same way that we talk about careers or adjectives that describe us was really important to me. We all have pronouns and we all use pronouns uh, at some point in our lives. And I heard you say something, I think it was in an interview and I thought this was really great because I'm gonna be honest, it didn't always put my pronouns there because I felt like I was like, not hip enough to or something or uh -huh. too old to do that. But then um, 
you said something once about like, it's a nice way to show people that you are accepting mm -hmm. of their pronouns. And I think for so many of us, I, I never thought of it that way, that it would make somebody feel welcome and comfortable mm -hmm. telling me their pronouns. So I'm, I'm getting better. Um, I still don't feel quite, you know, I don't, I don't feel quite as nervous about doing it. I realize it's not a hipster thing anymore. <laughs> that we should all do it to let people know, you know, that yeah. we're open and there and supportive. Absolutely. <laughs> really? Is there okay? Is my audio okay? I hear an echo. Yes. You're, no, you're good. Okay. Um, I think it's a really quick way for allies to be like, I'm someone who understands that pronouns may not match how someone looks and I'm here for learning your pronouns. So Heather, you know, I used to have really, really short hair. And when I had really, really short hair and I used they and them, people were fine with it. And then when I grew my hair out, they will automatically use she and her for me. So it's really important to me to like now on Zoom and other virtual platforms, I add my pronouns on so that people know what my pronouns are. But that's because I've gotten comfortable with it. I didn't always feel comfortable. But if somebody else logged on and I knew that they were cis and they, they were straight and they were an ally and they had their pronouns on, I would change my name to show my pronouns on Zoom because it made me feel like, oh, OK, this is a space in which I can do that. And no one's going to be like but you have long hair and your name is Catherine and I'm confused. Um, and I think that that's also like a really important thing that if it's okay to be confused about someone's gender, but it's not okay to question their gender, right? So like it's confusing to people that I have long hair and I haven't changed my name and I will continue to use Catherine and I go by Katie in my personal life and I love my name. I will not change my name. Um, and other people do, but it's not okay to be like, are you sure you're a non-binary? Cause your hair is long, right? It's totally okay to be confused why my hair frequently changes length, but it's not okay to question it to me. But so that's like one of those things that's sometimes difficult to navigate, but really important to know. It's okay to be confused. It's not okay to question it to the person. So I love your name too. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so speaking of, question confused what do you think the best way if somebody misgenders somebody mm -hmm. accidentally mm -hmm. what's the best way for them to react or what would you like someone's reaction to be that's such a good question so for me like if somebody uses she her and i sometimes i don't correct it depends on the situation right so sometimes i'm like you know what i'm gonna let this skate by because i'm in a situation where i'm just gonna let it skate by but if I correct it, I'll say, I use they, them now. And the best reaction to that is, oh, I didn't know, thanks so much for correcting me, or I'm sorry, I forgot, I'll fix that now. And just moving on. The like, I'm so sorry, I keep forgetting, blah, blah, blah. That like starts to make me feel like, wait, I feel guilty for bringing it up now. Instead, just say like, I'm sorry, I'm great to know, thanks for the reminder. And then trying to use it moving on is, is perfect. Um, and it's okay. Like people, people mess up pronouns. That's going to happen. Uh, you know, it'd be great. Like, I, you know, if people like learned going forward and I wasn't correcting it every single time I interacted with somebody, but people mess them up and it's okay. It's just important to make sure that you say like, I'm sorry, I got it. I'm working on it. Thank you so much. And then kind of moving the conversation on. And the nice thing now is we have a book. So yeah. kids growing up, will you know learn and become more comfortable with sharing their pronouns and understanding other people's pronouns which i think is important a lot of people you know think oh do i do i buy a book if it doesn't necessarily relate to my child and the yeah. idea is of course yes you know you're buying a book so that your child understands everybody around them exactly and think, yeah and i think that that is really important i just okay one more quick question then i'll let everybody go because i know it's Sunday morning, people are getting up and get out. This is a great way to start the day. I just, I'm curious because I love the layout of the book and I'm not sure, I love how they put um, the uh, adjectives and nouns in one color to describe the character and the pronouns yes. in another color. Did you work with the illustrator on that? Was that something the illustrator just picked up on from how you were writing? The yeah. design is really fabulous. When I wrote out, I wrote 
everything was the exclamation marks. It was all part of like the same document. Mm -hmm. And Anne, who is an incredible illustrator, I absolutely loved working with them. I think that their illustrations like really make this book come alive. Um, they made all the decisions about how to style those words over um, around the characters. And I think that they might've taken it from the part at the end where I say like all our, our words floating around us. I think then they, they took that through the whole book, but in terms of using the colors, that was all of Anne's idea. And um, I think it's beautiful. It's really helpful for identifying different types of words in the book, yeah. um, but they just did a fantastic job with the illustrations in this book. I love it so much. And I don't know if you noticed, but these are called end papers. So the beginning of the papers, but you see, uh, ooh, pointing the wrong way. Ari doesn't have pronouns at the beginning end papers, and at the end end papers, they do have pronouns. So I thought that that was like a fun little detail that was worked into the end papers. It is great, and we are so excited, and we're thrilled to have this book. And I just want to remind everybody again, if you would like a signed book, Catherine will be here next week. So just go to childrensbookworld.net. We can get you all uh, signed up. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Thank you so much, Catherine. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank and you. everybody have a great day. Thank you.